Here's a real world example of how powerful reciprocal concessions can be. How to make smart people do stupid and immoral things. A great example of this is Watergate. You may have heard of that term. The word gate has been added to the end of all kinds of things for anything involving a scandal. Choppergate, tote gate, wine gate, bridge gate, billy gate, moniker gate, celeb gate, gamer gate, and even deflate gate. So, Watergate was a big political scandal in the United States of America. The United States political system has Republicans versus the Democrats. At the time of Watergate, the Republicans were in power and President Nixon was the president. There was an election coming up in a year's time. The Republicans had formed this dirt unit whose job it was to dig up dirt on the Democrats. As part of their brief, they did something that was reckless and disastrous which was that they broke into the office of a senior Democrat in the Watergate Hotel. They stole some documents and they bugged his office. This is a massively stupid thing to do for a whole range of reasons, not least of which is that it's illegal and if it comes out then it would cause disgrace for the government. And in fact, that's what happened. The Republicans went on to win the election, but then a few months after that they got busted for having done this and Nixon had to resign. It was a huge risk which backfired. The other thing is that they didn't need to take that risk. They were way ahead in the polls and there was no reason to believe that the Democrats even had any good juice that they could use. Why would such smart people do such stupid things? It's interesting actually when you analyse it. The guy, by the way, who came up with this strategy, his name was Gordon Liddy. He went to some Republican strategists and said, I've got this plan. You're going to love this plan. It's going to cost like a million bucks and it's going to involve breaking into this guy's office and stealing documents and bugging the office. And I think we should have kidnapping squads that would kidnap Democrats and drive them across the Mexican border and they'll mug them. Then we would have yachts full of high class prostitutes that we can also use to lure the Democrats and we'll blackmail them and we'll have this chase plane over them specifically equipped and we can use that to listen into their conversations. It's like this really, really insane, expensive, evil James Bond kind of plan. And they were like, you're mad, go away. And so he did. But then he came back a few weeks later and said, look, I've had time to reflect. And I think, yes, maybe the kidnapping and the mugging squads may be illegal, maybe a little evil. We don't need that. The specially equipped communications chase plane, that's a bit expensive. I can drop that. But the yacht full of prostitutes, that's non-negotiable. And we want to break into the office, of course. This is going to cost half a million bucks. And the Republicans were still not into the plan and told him, you're mad, go away. Then Liddy came back a few weeks later with the plan that they finally said yes to. This is going to cost a quarter of a million dollars. And all we're going to do is break into this guy's office, steal some documents and bug the office. Here, some Republican insiders who were not at these meetings subsequently found out about the plan and their reaction was along the lines of, what the hell? Why did you even agree to this? So why did they agree to it? You can see what kind of social psychological principles are in operation here. It's reciprocal concessions and the contrast effect. You can almost hear them saying, no one was particularly overwhelmed with the plan that cost a million dollars and had the plane, prostitutes, luxury boat and kidnappings. We thought that maybe a quarter of a million dollars was acceptable. We were reluctant to send him away with nothing. Some of the Republicans said that if Liddy had come out at the beginning and said, look, I have this plan to burglarise and wiretap Larry O'Brien's office. We might have rejected that out of hand, but instead he came to us with this elaborate call girl, kidnapping, mugging, sabotage, wiretapping scheme. He'd asked for this whole loaf when he was quite content to settle for half or even a quarter. That's the point where this guy realises he's been played. That guy Liddy knew what he was doing. He started with a ridiculous initial offer and subsequent offers seemed less ridiculous in comparison. It makes you realise that being smart doesn't make you immune from being ripped off like this. And these things are in operation even when the political stakes are really high, even when the moral stakes are really high.